Well, okay, welcome back everyone to another presentation. I'm not even going to tell you where I'm at. <laughs> it's a place I've been to uh, really since uh, since wintertime, since last fall. So, uh, yeah, it's just Rush Valley. And these are the Ochre Mountains. I'm looking from the west to the east. So we're seeing the west side of the Ochres. And I'm just putting in the sky right now now. This day was very windy, so all I could really do is just get a line drawing done, take a photograph, study it out, a little preliminary sketch, and then bring all that in for work in the studio. So this is a studio painting in the end, albeit a watercolor. So as I have pre-wet the sky with water, the colors that you see are going to lighten quite a bit. They're going to lighten up a lot. And you'll see that happening as the color dries as I move on in the painting process and get those um, landscape elements in. So I get questions once in a while from folks about my paper and whether I stretch it or not. I don't stretch it. The paper buckles. I just learn to deal with it and it works out in the end. I'm using this flat three-quarter inch brush just kind of push a little of the paint around while it's wet and kind of help me get the shape and the rhythm to those cloud patterns in the sky that helps it to work for me. So where uh, I'm standing from in terms of where I took the photograph where I did the drawing. Actually, I was sitting behind the steering wheel of my car. Uh, all of that is on the far west side of Rush Valley. This is where bands of wild horses still run. So we're looking to the east from the Onaquai Wild Horse Range, and this is what we're picking up. These white peaks, these um, snow-capped peaks that you see. The main mountain amongst all of that is Flat Top Mountain. And the interesting thing about it is that it's it's about 10,500 roughly feet and um, it is the 99th most prominent mountain peak in the United States. <laughs> Now, there's more than just elevation that determines the prominence of a mountain peak. And when I sit there in Rush Valley and look all around the valley, no matter what position I'm in, Flat Top Mountain at the southern end of the Ochre Mountains really stands out. It's quite a prominent feature. So I think the, uh, the ranking, I guess, is, is fitting. So I'm just going through and blocking in the basic colors that I'm going to build on. And I'm thinking in terms of what I'm going to lay over the top of what is down there initially. So you see that happening with some of those darker blues and then the grayish violet going over the top. And then working my way right on down through the rest of the painting. working into warmer colors and of course the warmest ones will be in the very foreground. Those distant patterns of the sagebrush are very interesting to try and establish. Um, that perspective is fun to try and get. All right, well I'm going to turn you over to the music. I'll see you on the other side. Enjoy.
Well, okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the music. So as I come into the foreground, like I said before, more intense colors, um, greater value contrasts, those are the elements, those are the tools I have to help create a sense of the depth of space. This does not have a lot in the way of things going from the distance into the foreground to help create a sense of linear perspective. All I can really do is play with color intensity and, and value contrast. And so now I'm painting in the little just spits and spots of junipers that are out there in the middle of this uh, open valley. And what I'm doing with them is I'm painting them at different sizes, kind of creating some overlapping feeling and some size relationships in order to create the sense of the depth of space. And I have a couple of graphics that I put together that you'll see in just a few seconds that hopefully help to explain that. So the thicker and the bolder and the darker lines that are spaced further apart, they have a sense or a feeling of coming forward or being closer to the viewer. While the thinner, lighter, closer together lines in proximity to each other have a feeling of being back there in the distance. Well, a similar thing is true with the objects that I have drawn on here, kind of symbolizing tree shapes that um, that same kind of thing is happening and you get a sense of the depth of space that way and that's the kind of game that i am playing as i work with that middle ground of that open valley so i hope you that helps you get a sense or a better vision of what it is that i am doing i already have planned to maybe consider doing this again and maybe playing with that idea even more so within uh, within that painting. Of course, I'll make a video of it. And you'll have a chance to see it. <laughs> okay, the greater contrast going in. I hope you see that as compared with the distance. So the a use of complementary colors is the dominant theme here the complements of orange and blue. There are variations of those colors within the painting, but essentially it's an orange-blue complementary relationship painting. And now there is another element of design that I think adds great visual interest to the painting. Okay, well, that's it for me. We're coming down to the end. I've taken the image away. I'm just trying to paint the painting itself and finish it up. Take care everybody. Have yourself a great day. <laughs>